This time in the Prop Master, well, we set our sights on finishing up these three tubes right here. And um, in the end, I managed to finish about a third of it. I, I get it. I'm slow. Okay, it's actually not that bad, as you can see. Um, I only did the center section, but um, there's actually quite a bit of work that goes into this section, and what we do here really has a huge effect on everything that happens all the way up the central part here. So, yes, we only got one of the three tubes done, but uh, in the end, I think that one tube's about a third of the work of the entire job, so it's not that bad. Trust me, we'll get to all that stuff soon enough. Um, but we really did a lot, and uh, if we're going to show that, we need to get to work. Okay, so here's the jetpack, and what we have right now is three completely open tubes that we need to deal with. Um, and the first thing we want to do is to close those tubes up. I've kind of gone back and forth as to exactly how I want to do that, uh, at least as far as this time goes. And I've, I've decided to go ahead and switch gears here a little bit. And I'm gonna do things a little bit differently than I did with the prototype, um, at least as far as uh, this center tube is concerned. The bottom of this has a recess in the bottom of it, which has this piece in there, which is a vent. Um, and I was going to go ahead and build a layer with that cut out and then some pieces that connected this to that layer and um, that was just going to be a lot of gluing and, and a lot of stuff that was maybe more complicated than it really needed to be. So I've changed directions with that and what we're going to do now is cut a couple of pieces of MDF. This is a four and one eighth inch hole saw which it will not fit perfectly into the pvc pipe because the pvc pipe is not perfectly round and there's just nothing we can do to make it perfectly round so there's going to be some fitting together but um, this was as close as i could get and that would still fit inside the pvc pipe so this is a uh, four and an eighth and uh, four and one eighth inches is pretty close to 10 and a half centimeters. So that's the size that I'm gonna have this hole saw. Um, and let's cut out two of these. By the way, this is one inch MDF, uh, which is medium density fiberboard. I could not actually find one inch at uh, my Home Depot, so I had to buy two half inch pieces and uh, use wood glue to glue them together. So let's go ahead and cut out two pieces or two uh, discs. This has been a fairly grabby um, hole saw, so I think maybe I'll clamp this down real quick. Now you notice that I go down and then I blow everything off and you know, I'll go down another quarter of an inch and I'll blow everything off. Um, with a big hole saw like this, you'll end up with just a whole bunch of sawdust trapped down in there and you're more likely, it'll basically stop cutting at that point and you're more likely to start a fire than get any more cutting done. So you have to pull it back up, clean everything out and then cut some more. Looks like that's actually all the way through. 
Let's do it one more time. Now all we have to do is cut this shape out of one of them, glue them together, and we'll have the right shape for the bottom of the PVC pipe. Okay, so here's that piece. I've drawn it onto here. I actually used the original template as opposed to um, using that, the piece that I'd cut out before. I started to cut out the little slots here in the middle, but we're not using this part. We're going to be using these outside pieces, so there's no point in doing that. And you could cut this out on a bandsaw or a handheld saber saw um, or even a coping saw. Um, I'm going to use this uh, new jigsaw that my father-in-law was very nice and gave to me. Um, so I'm gonna try it out, cutting this piece out. So, like I said, we're not keeping this center piece, we're gonna be keeping the outside pieces. Just putting on my eye protection and air filter. Well, unfortunately, with the mask on, um, I can't blow the sawdust out of the way. <sighs> I may have to rig up a little air puffer that'll keep that clean. Try something. This almost guarantees that the compressor is going to go off at some point and be really loud, so I apologize for that. So that's one. Now that I have that worked out, let me put my dust mask back on. Okay, now once these pieces, I need to sand them a little bit to get rid of that little area, that little cut right there, but once we glue these on there, this will be just perfect to fit down in that PVC and uh, give us the same relief that we need. And then we can sand off all these corners, and make everything nice and round, and it'll be perfect. Okay, I'm afraid I had an appointment to uh, keep earlier, so I had to do this off camera. Um, but this was pretty simple. Um, I just got to glue these pieces on to the, uh, the piece that we did not cut out. But the way I did it was I took, once again, my template, I laid it down, traced it out, and then that gave me the uh, sort of the guidelines that I could put these in the right positions and then I just glued them down with wood glue. Um, 
One helpful hint would be if you take a little bit of table salt and sprinkle it over the glue before you put the two pieces of wood down, that'll help these stay in position. Because so often what happens when you try to clamp little pieces in precise position, um, the wood glue is such a good lubricant that this just kind of floats around and it will not stay in the right place while you're trying to clamp it down. So just a little bit of table salt sprinkled down over, uh, you know, I'll put glue on the bottom piece and then I'll put glue on the top piece and then I'll sprinkle some salt over on top of this bottom piece. Then you can lay that on top of it and it won't float around. It'll stay in position. So you can clamp it up. It'll be great. And then uh, it's been about 24 hours since then. So this is well attached. So um, you'll notice this little hole that happened when we used the hole saw to cut these pieces out. Now, we actually want that to be there. However, we also don't want it to be here on the surface where, you know, this, uh, this little vent cover here, um, you know, you don't need a big hole right here in the middle of it. So we need to fill that up. And that is a quarter inch pilot bit that goes in the hole saw. So I've got a quarter inch dowel rod here. Now I have cut a very small piece, you know, the very end of it, it's very thin, um, off of that. And uh, why I did that is going to become evident here in just a second. So what I want to do now is I want to hold this little piece, I'm hoping this is all on camera, this little piece onto the end of the dowel. And I want to push this in from the back. I'm afraid I can't see what's actually on my camera or on my phone. So hopefully this is on there somewhat. And I don't want to push it all the way till it's flush because I want to actually fill this in with uh, the baking soda. Let me see if I can back out here a bit. Okay. Um, what I should do, I'm going to cut this dowel to be a little bit shorter. Actually, you know what? This stayed in place. Um, this little end piece stayed in place. So basically I wanted a stopper to be in here, but I don't want to fill the whole hole that's back here because that hole is going to be very important later on. So I can kind of fill this and not glue the dowel rod in place. I want just a small amount in there. I do not want to fill it up in the first pass. And I'm going to try to clean that up real quick because I want that whole area to be as smooth as possible. I will probably go back here and and sand it, but you know, save yourself as much work as you can. So ideally, or not ideally, but my plan was, was to put the little piece on the end of here, hold that in place on the end of this dowel, glue that in place, and then I could pull the dowel out at this point so that it would not be glued in place. Because as you can see, we still have the hole in the back, which we will need later on. So now let's go ahead and finish filling this up. Let's make sure it's totally flush. Okay, that's totally flush. And now I'm going to take a sanding stick and just make sure that's nice and smooth. And unlike in the past, um, instead of just doing that with the course, I'm going to go ahead and sand this with, you know, my medium and fine sanding sticks as well. Because this is going to be a, a painted surface and we want it to be nice and smooth. I know that looks rough, but it's, if you feel it, it's totally smooth. Now, if you don't want, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this silver and then later on, I'm going to go back and paint these little stripes, you know, these little grates in as black. If you want there to actually be uh, some little grates there, you can go ahead and cut this pattern out on a piece of your Sintra 
and then glue that in place. If I'm gonna do that, I'll probably do that in a piece of aluminum. Um, I know that if you go on Etsy, you can find people that, that make these little grates and stuff out of aluminum. Um, I may do that later on, but for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and paint this silver, let this cure for a week or so, and then at the end of the build, I'll go back and paint my little stripes through here in flat black. And I'm pretty sure that's gonna look just fine considering this is the recessed in the bottom of the jetpack. Um, but if not, I can always add something on top of that later on. I've got my fine. You don't want this to have any texture at all because this is gonna be simulating metal. Okay, now I'm gonna use this mirror paint. Another thing that you could do is you could use some of this aluminum tape. And what you would do then is tape this whole thing, the bottom piece, then draw this part out, cut the aluminum tape out and pull these sections off so that just the center piece would be aluminum tape and then glue these down. You wouldn't wanna glue these on top of the tape. So you'd glue these down on the, you know, the parts where you remove the tape. And then you'd have a very shiny metallic piece there that you could go back later and paint these slots onto. That's just another way of doing it. I don't think it's gonna be necessary for this particular part. And I'm painting this now because my experience has been that highly reflective metallic paints take a ridiculous amount of time to fully cure. So I wanna give this a lot of time. Now I can see a little bit of area here where we filled that, but once again, this is gonna be underneath the jetpack, recessed an inch down into it. And that's gonna have the grates painted over the top of it. So I suspect that's gonna be fine, but if it's not, if I say it really bothers me, I can always go back and either go with an aluminum piece or the piece that we originally cut out, cut those little stripes into it, you know, the little grates into it, and then glue that down inside there. Okay, I think this is gonna be a two coat job. Let this paint dry, maybe not completely, but for, you know, 30 or 40 minutes. And then I'm gonna go back and put another coat on it. It's been about 30 minutes, so let's go ahead and do a second coat. I mean, ideally, if I had primed this beforehand, um, that would have been better, but I think it's gonna be fine. Okay. So there we have it, and now we can go on to the next step. Now that this piece is painted, we can go ahead and drop it into position. Um, you may have noticed that the last time you saw the bottom of this is, uh, or it was covered with writing everywhere, and it's not now because if you'll recall, when I glued the back on, or I glued the bottom part onto the back, it was not level, it kind of bent backwards a little bit so that it could actually glue to these little end pieces here. And I thought that was gonna be fine. I just filled in the gap that was around here. You know, I thought that everything would be good with that. But as it turns out, when you drop this piece in, it needs to be all even across all of here or it's not gonna look right. So I went in and I sanded everything level. So everything's level across here. You won't have to do that because I'm gonna go back into the templates and I'm gonna add a little over an eighth of an inch to the end of these little wings here um, so that when you bend everything and then glue this down, it should be level. So that should take care of that. You won't have to worry about that at all. 
Um, so now let's get back to actually attaching this piece onto here. I'm using this E6000. It's a flexible, paintable craft glue, it's called. I like it just because it's, as opposed to super glue, where it's something has to be snug up against something else to glue it. This has a little bit of body to it, so if there's a little gap there, it's still going to hold. Um, it takes 24 hours to fully cure, but it's still, um, you know, it's a very strong glue. You don't have to use this. Um, there's also, you could use caulking, um, you could use silicone, um, whatever you have available to you. You know, just you need to have some body to it. And I've gone back and forth about whether or not I should put the glue inside this and then drop that into it. That would probably be the cleanest way to do it. But I wanna make sure that the glue um, is all in here. And when I put this in here, if it makes a mess, I've got some paper towels to wipe it up and I'll just deal with that at the time. So let's just, uh, we'll get some glue all around here. And this isn't gonna be the only thing holding this in place. After this all cures, uh, we can go back afterwards and uh, put some super glue and baking soda in there to fill any gaps. I'm gonna sit here, set that down just for a second while I put the cap on the glue. Okay, now you wanna make sure that this is horizontal and as level as possible. See if I can't get up here and look down. You want to try to be as flat all the way across. So I don't want it to be sucked down below this top level. I don't want it to be poking up. That's also an advantage to using this glue is we've got plenty of time to kind of mess with it. And we want to make sure that there's not any stuck to the sides down in here also. And it definitely looks like it's turned that way, so let's twist it a little bit. Let me grab a ruler real quick. I'm gonna measure from this corner up to this corner here. And it doesn't matter what that measurement is as long as it's the same on both sides. Now I'm just holding up uh, a straight edge across these both of these sides here to make sure it just kind of looks even. I think that looks pretty good. In the end it just has to look right. That looks pretty good to me and everything seems to be pretty close to even. If it's a little bit off, we can do some sanding. Probably better for this to stick out a little bit more. It'll be easier to sand this part down than it will be to sand this outside down and make it all look flat. Okay, one last thing I'm gonna do here, because it's important that the hole that's in the middle, in the middle of this piece at the other, on the other side, um, be in alignment with everything else. I'm gonna flip this over, which you cannot see at the moment. Let me see if I can back up a little bit. Okay, I've just got a piece of quarter inch um, steel rod. We just wanna make sure that this will line up properly, and it does, so I think we're all good. So now we just have to wait for, you know, a good 12 hours or I think maybe overnight. It's pretty late at night now, so I think I'll just wait until in the morning and uh, then we can go on to the next step. Okay, so it's the next morning and this isn't 100% cured, but it should be held, you know, held in place pretty well. And now I want to go back in with my uh, baking soda and thin CA glue and fill in all these gaps. 
Obviously you could fill in these gaps with whatever kind of filler you want to use. I like the CA glue and baking soda because the result is pretty close to the same hardness as the plastics that I'm using here, the PVC. It may not be quite as hard as the PVC, but it's pretty close. So when I'm sanding it, it should sand pretty evenly. Off camera, um, about six hours ago, um, I remembered that I didn't do something. So I flipped this over and I just ran a bead of that E6000 around the outside edge, you know, on the bottom, on the other side of this, just so that um, it'll clog any holes. So my uh, baking soda doesn't just fall straight through here. And you know, it's the same procedures I've been doing all along. I don't want to fill this all the way up at one time. I'd like to try and make sure this is a solid, you know, so I don't want there to just be a lot of powder underneath a coating at the top of super glue. So I'd like to kind of build up the layers. Come on, can't seem to get that to hit in the right spot. Okay, now we'll do another layer. I'm going to be a little bit careful because um, this silver paint is still probably several days from being fully cured. I was afraid the uh, super glue was going to get into that little pile that was there. Okay, now we can work on the other end. So for the other end of the, uh, the center tube on the jetpack, you're gonna need some parts. Now, once again, we're doing this a little bit differently than we did on the prototype because I just found this works better. Um, you're gonna need a two inch by three inch, actually two two inch by three inch couplers, and you're gonna need one piece of three inch PVC. I'm afraid that once again, my knowledge of metric size PVC is, I, I, I would say limited, but it's not even limited. It's completely unknown to me. So uh, I can tell you the metric equivalents for uh, three by two is 7.6 centimeters down, to, or that's the big size, down to uh, 5.1 centimeters. And uh, hopefully, the quirks of PVC in the metric sizes are going to be similar to the quirks of, uh, you know, imperial sizes. So this piece of uh, three inch PVC has been cut down to roughly three inches in length. But that's not really important. What's important is that this is slightly smaller than the maximum size that it would take to put these two pieces together with them touching. And let me go ahead and show you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and assemble this because we're going to need it to cut the top of this piece off. Now I've already cut the top of this one off. 
um, just because I was trying to figure out sizes and things. But I'll go ahead and show you cutting as I cut this size off. You won't actually need to cut both ends off, just one of them, but I still want to show cutting the top off of this. So we're going to go ahead and do that. But let me go ahead and assemble this. Actually, you know what, before we do that, um, on the bottom of these pieces, you'll see there's some printing that uh, sticks out and we want to get rid of that. I've just got a piece of coarse sandpaper. I think this is uh, 80 grit. And it's it gone. I have a slightly finer piece. I think this is uh, 120, just to smooth this up a little bit. Okay, so that's nice and smooth. I mean, if you wanted to, you could get into finer and finer, but I don't think it's gonna be necessary. So now I'm just gonna jam these together. And you can see that they touch in the middle and that's the important part. You want it to be big enough to really hold these pieces together, but you also want it to be able to come completely together and touch. Now, this is what I used in the prototype. This is a three inch to one and a half inch coupler, but looking at photos and everything, it became pretty obvious that the actual piece is doesn't get anywhere near as small as this, um, as and this piece reduces down. So it's much closer to this. So we've gone to a, a bigger size here, the two inch size, um, but we're still gonna have to cut this down. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this part off. Um, not only this part, a little bit down into the bevel as well, but not much. What I'm doing is I'm cutting this top 13 sixteenths of an inch off, which is 2.1 centimeters. You can do this however you want to, to do it. You could use a compound miter saw. Uh, in this case, I'm using the band saw. You can use a, a hand saw without any trouble at all, but you will have to use a miter box because you want this to be 90 degrees to the sides. You don't want this to be a a warped wobbly cut. You want this to be a flush, a nice straight cut that is 90 degrees to the sides. Um, I already have my fence set up to cut off at uh, 13 16 of an inch. This is a much more aggressive blade than I'd really like to use on PVC. There's a good chance this is going to grab and be very difficult to do, but I'm going to try it anyway because I'm lazy and I've got some other projects that I need that blade for after I do this. So I don't want to change it and then change it back. But I would suggest if you're doing it to use a finer blade than this. Now, um, let me go back a little bit. The reason why I put this all together is because I wanted to have a nice large surface here to keep this um, stable and not move back and forth. So we can keep that 90 degree angle. Also, this gives me a lot more to safely hold on to uh, and keep my fingers away from the blade. Okay, that actually went about the way I was afraid it might. Um, and unfortunately, I really tore this up pretty badly. Um, I think what was happening was the miter guide was getting caught up over here because in order to fit this in here, I have to actually take it out of here and put it up on this, on this part up here and it kind of gets hooked. So, I'm going to try again without using that and see if I can guide this through there slowly enough. It may catch again. And if it does, I may have to actually go get another one of these pieces. I'm not too worried about how damaged this is just because I don't need this end really. It's not going to show up because I already have this part cut out. So if I can cut this out just to show you how to do it, or just to show you me doing it. 
you know, that'll be enough. Okay, well that was a good show of how it is actually pretty simple, but that PVC is grabby and can bite you if you're not careful. This actually is gonna to be totally fine. I've got just a couple of little scratches up here. So um, all's good. Okay, there's a reason why we didn't glue this all up before I cut it out. And uh, the reason is I wanted to make sure everything was gonna fit properly and, and everything like that. And all is not great, as it turns out. The reason why I wanted to do it this way is because if you'll recall in the prototype, we did this, which is the reducer and then a, a coupler. But as you see, that really does not fit inside the uh, four inch PVC. And I had to go back and sand this whole thing smoothly and consistently down um, to where it would fit. So it would line up with sort of the bottom of this. You can see there's a little bit of a, a lip there. This does fit easily. Actually, I have a piece in there. Um, so that does fit in there easily. The problem is this is actually too short. And when I actually compared it with the prototype, there would be pretty much none of this down into the four inch PVC because it needs to be, it needs to stick out pretty much that much. So we were kind of back to where we were here trying to do a ton of sanding to make this coupler fit into the four inch PVC and then I decided I didn't want to do that it's just too much sanding so I took one of the other reducers and I cut the bevel end off so we kind of just have a cylinder here and if we um, use a four and a quarter inch long which is you, know, you can get away with 11 centimeters long piece of the three inch PVC. Then we'll put that there, this there, and this in the middle, but there's still a problem. One of the reasons why these will fit in so well is they taper and they actually get wider as they get to the back here. And so when you try to push this piece through there, it goes in fine, but it doesn't go all the way through, it gets too tight. So we're gonna have to do some sanding still. We're gonna have to sand the inside of this third reducer down so that it will fit smoothly inside or over the top of this three inch PVC. Now, if we're a little off, that's fine because this doesn't have to be super snug the whole way down. Um, it's just basically just gonna be a spacer in between these two ends so that'll be fine. But let's get to sanding uh, down this. Uh, yeah, it'll be this end. So let's sand the inside of this so that this piece will fit through it. This is gonna be a little bit tedious, but it shouldn't be that bad. Dremel would also be a pretty good choice for this if you um, use the, uh, the sanding drum. If you had a spindle sander, that would be uh, obviously the right choice of tools, but I don't. We're getting there. You 
You know, I think I'm gonna try the Dremel tool real quick. Okay, so here's a drum sander on my Dremel. And normally I don't like the drum sander because it tends to leave gouges in there. But this isn't important for its looks or you know, it's not gonna show up. And the fit isn't all that important either. So um, gouges are fine. Uh, when you do something like this, just like with the other bits, you know, the other bits where you're trying to sand, like the EVA foam and stuff, you want to go sort of, it's turning this way, so you want to go with the direction that it wants to go. If you go against that rotation, it'll tend to dig in and get big divots in there. This is a much harder material than EVA foam, so it probably won't have that big of a risk for that. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to go ahead and put on my mask because I'm about to generate a lot of PVC dust. That didn't take long at all. That made very quick work of it. That's definitely the way to go. So let's see if these will all fit together now happily. And I think that's going to work pretty well. I might, I'm tempted to sand just these edges right here and here so that it's a little bit smoother because we did notice that it's, it fits fine here, but it does swell out here toward the bottom. So if we can take just that little bit off, I think it's gonna work fine. Okay, I think it's time to go ahead and glue this together. That'll make it easier to sand all this stuff and um, not have things spinning around. So I will make sure that um, I keep these in line so that I know that this goes with that and this goes with that, so. I don't think I really need to, well, let's go ahead and do it. Probably should mark that though. Um, that way. This is just so that I'll kind of know. That doesn't look particularly straight. I think I flipped that on myself. That's just so that I'll know where to glue that centerpiece. And I don't trust this now, so I'm gonna try it again. Okay, that looks fine. And that's just to make sure that it lines up right. And this is just like when we did the flat PVC foam board pieces. We just put a layer on here a layer inside here and then another layer on the first piece again okay now i probably should be wearing a glove i'm gonna go wipe this off real quick okay so clean that up I've got a piece of cardboard down here got my gloves on washed my hands we're back in action I think what I'll do this time is I'll do the inside first. Just because that's easier. Just repeat the process. Like I said, I'm not sure why it wants to um, separate, but I think I'll find a weight and sit on top of this. Yes, I'll do it. Okay, now I'll let this cure and then we can start sanding the sides down. After about 30 minutes, this should be quite well set up. That's not going anywhere. And this is a little bit 
pores. Of course, this side's gonna be hidden, so this is really the stuff you have to worry about. Um, we could definitely smooth this up a little bit with the sandpaper. You'll find as these get taller, they get a lot harder to deal with because the center of gravity is higher. It doesn't want to stay flat. Okay, so that's much smoother now. So I talked about setting this stuff down. Um, because only this much of it's gonna be down into the PVC, I don't think we have to worry about this fitting in there. It should fit fine into there. We don't have to sand, we don't have to remove any material to make this fit into the PVC. But we do need to make these joints, you know, as seamless as we can get them. And that's gonna require some sanding. And you know the drill, sanding stick. Probably not gonna be scratching things up as we go along. This bottom was not gonna be so bad. And I can see that it's scuffing up on both sides of the joint and not so much about, you know, a, a quarter of an inch or more like an eighth of an inch away from the line. So it means there's a little bit of a ridge here. And while I don't think that's gonna be really noticeable, it'd be nice if we could smooth that out a little bit better. And while this would definitely work just fine, I'm gonna speed things up a little bit with my finger sander. And this is the coarsest uh, grit sandpaper I have for this. And unfortunately, I think this is my last one, so hopefully this lasts long enough for me to do this. It's getting a little worn right there. Um, let's see if we can't smooth this out. I think I may concentrate more on this one here that's got a bigger gap and more issues, at least with this uh, coarser sandpaper. Now I just want to um, try to take out some of the more ab aggressive uh, grinds on here. See if I can't smooth that out. I'm gonna try it with the fingers, with the um, little sanding stick. And if that doesn't work, I'll see if I can get a finer belt for this and go over it that way. Actually, I might try the, uh, the rotary tool again, just because it's round and it might be able to get a, a little bit different uh, pattern at least. And you can do this whole thing with the with the Dremel tool or you know rotary tool. In typical style over here, I can't see the marks in the without the light. I took out the big stuff. The whole thing now has just got a little bit of a, a dull finish. And of course, even that, even that bit lifts some pattern of stuff on here. I think in the end, there's no substitute for just going in and uh, hand sanding this with some finer sandpaper. Uh, they had to take all that stuff out. I don't think there's any way to get around that. So let's just see if we can't take some of this uh, evenly smooth this out a little bit more evenly with just some hand sandpaper. 
Okay, I'm afraid I forgot to hit play. You haven't missed much though. I just went over this whole thing with uh, 120 sandpaper. Um, and now I'm gonna go over the whole thing with uh, 220 sandpaper. Looking back at this, when it comes to filling this gap, I mean, the obvious choice would be to fill it with baking powder and, I mean, sorry, baking soda and super glue. But if you do that, I would do it before you start all the sanding because if I do that, I'm just gonna have to come back and sand all the stuff over again. So I think what I'm gonna do, because I should have done that, um, is I think I'm going to not fill this and then wait till we get ready to paint it and then I will fill it with that uh, Alex quick dry caulking and just smooth it out that way. It'll look more like a weld at that point. But let's go ahead and, and smooth this up. I don't think I'll go finer than 220. Okay, I think that's gonna be just fine. There is one last thing that needs some sanding and that is, I don't know if you can see it, but there's, I can find the light to hit it. There's a little uh, extruded print on here. It says two by three. We need to sand that off. It's barely visible, but it's still visible. Okay, that's it for that. And might as well take the 220 and just kind of go over that so that it's got the same finish as the rest of it. And this dull finish is fine because this will all be painted in a matte spray paint, not uh, glossy. Okay. Okay, um, as you can probably tell, I took the time and went ahead and uh, used the Alex Fast Dry to fill in this gap all the way around, smooth it out, let it cure. Um, I don't feel bad about not showing that just because you see me do it a hundred times and you'll see me do it again before the end of this build. Um, but we can go ahead and move on with this now. What we have to deal with now is this. This goes at the top of this, you know, it's basically this part right here. And um, I bought this one on Etsy and it's got some issues, but it's, it's pretty good. It's the right size and everything. Um, I just need to cut these off, but I want to go ahead and show you how to not have to buy this. I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to use this or just use what I've got here. I'll decide that in a minute or, you know, later on. So, to turn this into this, we need a piece of paper and we need the piece that we cut off of here. Hopefully I told you not to throw that away earlier. We're gonna need this again after this, by the way. So we'll just use this to trace a circle. And then however you want to cut this circle out. Okay, now being very careful to make everything line up, you're gonna fold this exactly in half. Make sure that you don't get it too large on one end. You want this to meet up perfectly. And then you want to, lining this edge up all the way across, make sure once again that this lines up perfectly. Don't get sloppy here. Now fold these over. And I think that's probably about as good as you can do it. I'm gonna try to fold this last piece over. I'm pretty sure the outside's going to be 
I can't get that outside piece to line up over here. Um, let's take a look at this first. I could be wrong. Let's try to do one more. So what's trying to happen is this inside piece is trying to stick out further than the outside piece. So really trying to hold that in place. And there's no way we can do that one more. So unfold this. Okay, and then take a marker and you want to mark each one of these crosses, uh, creases. You don't have to go all the way down, just mark the ends. I'm having a hard time today. Some of these didn't crease very well, so I can just put the creases, I can line the creases up on either side and make sure I get a good crease there. Okay, so now you can lay this down onto here, hold it in place, and then transfer these marks onto your piece here. Okay. Okay, so the first time I did this, I wasn't able to get all um, eight of the channels here. Um, I was only able to do four of them. And if that happens to you, then you can get the four and then line it up, you know, rotate it and line it up where it's right in between the next two and then mark those. It's just a way to do that. As it turns out, I was able to get all eight so you should get what would be, altogether there should be 16 dots, I guess. Now I've just got a piece of wood that has a 90 degree angle cut in it. Um, it doesn't have to be a big thick piece of wood like this. Um, you do want it to be thick enough that it can lay flat on here and not have an angle. So you don't want something super thin that can easily pivot, you want it to be reasonably you know, wide, but it doesn't have to be a two by four by any means. Um, you want this part of it to be long enough to fit all the way across on both sides of this. And you want this part of it to be long enough to touch um, this little angle change right here. And I want to line the marks that are opposite each other up and then I can use that to transfer a line down to that little shoulder. And we're going to have to do that 16 times. I am totally covering that up, aren't I? Make sure you're going all the way across. Don't, you know, start doing something like that where you're not all the way through the middle of the hole. Okay, the next thing we need to do is to go ahead and connect our dots. Um, just draw some lines. Once again, making sure you're going directly through the middle here. I guess you actually could have done this part at the same time as you did this down here when you were using this. So that's something to keep in mind. You could have drawn the line there as well.
at least with this, you only have to do it eight times because you're doing both sides at once. Okay, and now we have all those drawn. This is obviously the tool for the next part. This is a radial arm saw, and it's kind of like a table saw, but the blade hangs down from an arm instead of sticking up from the bottom. And, um, you know, you could just rig something with uh, a line here so that you could line things up, and you could make your first, you know, we put a, a dado blade or a wobble blade set for a quarter of an inch, run this thing out make a cut across here flip it to the next one do it again do that eight times and you have this done perfectly the problem with that is first of all not too many people have a radial arm saw it's not a common tool actually uh, there's probably one of these per every 10 table saws out there and the other problem with this is is I find it truly terrifying to try and hold this with my hand while I bring this arm or you know bring this blade across here because not only would this try to pull it that way as the blade comes up and grabs this it's going to try to pull it up and I really don't want to think about what happens if this grabs somehow and pulls my hand up into that blade uh, I'm sure you could do this safely without that much thought into it, but um, it just gives me uh, shivers down my spine and not the good kind. So we're going to do this a different way. Um, if you do have a radial arm saw and you do want to do it this way, just make sure to use, you know, common sense and use the tool the way it's meant to be used and take all the precautions that you need to. But yeah, this would be a quick, easy way to do it, but I don't think it's the way we're going to go. Okay, so unfortunately we have to make up for not having the right tool and uh, lack of bravery with tedium. So I'm gonna have to measure each one of these lines or right, I'm gonna have to measure an eighth of an inch on either side of these lines all the way around. Uh, by the way, a quarter of an inch is about six millimeters, three millimeters on each side of that line. And notice here that I was just looking at it and I could see that one of these lines was completely in the wrong spot. I had a, a really big area and a small area here. So I remeasured and drew a new line that's in the right place. Okay, then much like we did before, we're going to connect to this one. So in this case, instead of going across the middle, you're gonna to go to the, so here's this one. This is the one across the middle. I'm gonna connect this dot that's on the right side to once again, the ones on the right side over here. So here's our center piece. I'm gonna scoot over to where I get those two dots. I'm gonna draw lines there. And then go to the opposite side and do the same. And I have to repeat that process eight more times or seven more times.
I'm just going to fill these in real quick just to take a look at it. Now we have to basically do the same thing down here where this line meets the, uh, the shoulder here where it changes angles. You don't need to watch this. I'll be back in a second when I have those marked. Okay, once you have all of your lines measured here and drawn, um, you need to find something, doesn't matter what it is, just find something where you can take a pen or a pencil and hold it in a stable way that is right where this shoulder is. And then once you get that held stably, you're gonna rotate, leave your pencil where it is supposed to be and rotate this around. Okay, because you need something that's gonna be a consistent height. And then we can go ahead and fill in all of these little squares here, which once again, you don't need to see that. I'm gonna fill these in and I'll be right back. Okay, so I filled everything in. Um, and if, as you'll notice, my line here actually wasn't flat. I think um, this bottom part down here probably isn't perfectly 90 degrees to the sides. So it was leaning over ever so slightly. So I had to go in by hand and just sight down this little angle change and extend these down to that angle change. Because uh, you know, it was more important for this to actually go all the way down to where the, the angle changes than uh, you know to be aligned with this uh, line that we drew. And also, if you'll notice, this is not perfectly spaced. I've got some of these that are, um, now I can't find them because I'm looking for them, but um, we have some of these that are quite close together and others that are much further apart. Um, but I'm gonna blame that on trying to film this while I was trying to do it. If you take the time to make sure that all of your creases on your little circle are well creased and that it does not move at all when you transfer those lines onto here you'll have perfectly spaced uh, lines here and as you can see I couldn't really find it when I was looking for it so um, even though I know they're there so I'm not too worried about it since we're not using the radial arm saw we have to find something else to cut this out with and I tried pretty much everything because of the, the angles and everything, trying to cut this with a handsaw is darn near impossible. Even if it's like a coping saw, or even I have a, a handsaw that is specifically designed to cut through PVC, and that was useless as well. But I do have this. It's quite a bit easier to come by than a radial arm saw. Um, this is a Dremel brand oscillating cutter. They have many other brands that would all work just fine. You can find these at pretty much any hardware store. They're almost becoming as ubiquitous as uh, just a rotary tool. But these, just, just the regular wood uh, blade here, and this will cut this PVC about as easily as, as anything can. Um, so with this, what we're gonna do, we're just gonna run down the edge of each one of these black lines all the way around. And I'm trying to figure out how I can hold this so you can see what's going on, but and that I can still make it work right. So we'll we'll see how this works. Saw how easy that was. 
Um, I'm actually going to do the rest of these off screen just because it's not easy for me to hold this out here and, and do this while you can see it on camera. It's a lot easier if I can kind of sit down in a chair and wedge this in place and, and cut it. So let me make all these cuts and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've cut all these lines and um, I can't reiterate enough how much easier it is with that oscillating tool than anything else that I've tried to use. Um, honestly, this whole thing took maybe five minutes, probably a lot less than five minutes. Got all this melted PVC that's stuck over the outside, but that's okay. We'll deal with that in a minute. Um, now what we have to do is free all of these little black sections away from it. And uh, that's not easy to do, or actually it is quite easy, but it wasn't easy to figure out how to do it. Um, finally, what I had to do was take my rotary tool and um, the little metal cutting wheel and go after one of these blades because, you know, we're trying to cut a quarter inch uh, little gap here. We obviously can't do that with something that's like an inch and a half wide. So I cut this thing down to, you know, uh, maybe two teeth on the end here. This is actually much smaller than you need. You could probably do uh, three full teeth on there and it would still work fine. I got a little carried away. So let's go ahead and put this on. Okay, and then I'm going to try to hold this as level as I can, and I'm just going to plunge cut in, in between these lines. Okay. And, you know, just, this is good, even when it oscillates, it's, this is too small. Um, when you cut yours, it's probably good to do a little test uh, on a piece of scrap PVC or something, just so you can see what the smallest width is. Um, you know, if if your uh, if your smallest width is bigger than six millimeters or a quarter of an inch, then you need to make this a little bit smaller. But. Once again, I'm going to cut all of these out while I can sit down and kind of wedge this between my legs and brace everything. So, Also, if you put this in a vise, it might help quite a bit. Then you could use two hands on here. But uh, I'll be right back. Well, here it is. And my bit lasted uh, until the very last plunge cut and broke right before that. So once again, if this was, um, you know, slightly thicker, I think it would be fine. Also, uh, on the one, the sample that I was showing you, I kind of pried up with it. Don't do that. I'm sure that weakened it somewhat. I didn't make another one of these. I just used the regular one and I, you know, cut down the middle and kind of went back and forth. And it was tedious, but it did come out. So you could do that where you... You know, you do the outside and then you come down the middle and kind of angle it and do it back and forth like that. That will work, but it's going to be very tedious to do it. You'll be much happier, you know, cutting one of these up. This once again took less than five minutes, whereas if I had done it with a regular bit, it probably would have taken more like 30 or 40 minutes. Um, obviously wear your eye protection and stuff with this and, you know, be careful. It's still a power tool. Some of these are going to be slightly angled wrong just because it's hard to get, you know, to, to see what you're doing as far as putting the angle in perfectly. So, plus you can see how rough all the stuff's melted PVC has stuck to the outside. So, it's time to take a file and clean this up.
stupid. I was going to use a little file in here, but I've got this big thick file that has teeth on the side, so I'm wondering if that's the right size. Nope, it is slightly bigger than a quarter of an inch, so no good. If it was just a little bit smaller, that'd be perfect. As it is, we're back to the little guys. Okay, I'm going to continue to clean this up a little bit more, but um, you know, I'm just going to keep using these same files until it's clean. You don't have to wait up for that. Okay, so now we're ready to start assembling the part that's going to fit into that center PVC pipe. Um, but you know, before we do that, get a piece of paper and a pencil, and it's time to take some notes. First of all, you only want to cut this part off of one end. You want to leave it on the other end. I went ahead and glued this one back on because you want this bottom part to uh, fit the two inch PVC pipe nice and solidly. If you cut this in the right place, it'll still fit snugly up here. Um, and I guess the same goes for down here, but um, it'll be a lot easier to just leave it alone. But you will have to like you saw before with the Dremel, uh, Dremel inside here to remove that lip so that the pipe can fit all the way through here. For this center section, here's how you want to do that. Here is, if you, if you take your, let me show you this, like this. This is basically how it was. You want to take your three inch by two inch and put it on a three inch coupler. The reason why I say that is because this is not 90 degrees to this line or this line here. Um, it tapers in. This on the other hand is pretty much straight across. So it's gonna make it a lot easier to get a 90 degree cut on here. So I would definitely suggest taking a three inch PVC, putting it in the coupler and then putting these two together. That'll help you to uh, make all of your cuts and when you cut it make sure that you only lay you make sure that this is the part that's you know this part is the part that's laying flat and it's not the front you don't want it rocking forward you want it to be on this part here but the first cut you want to make is just part of this end piece and it's five sixteenths or eight millimeters in so cut that section off so that you have a piece that big. After you cut that off, then you can go ahead and cut this bevel off at the shoulder here where it changes angles. You can cut that off and then you can pull this back apart. Um, but this is not glued, it'll come apart. There it goes. So now you can take this part off after you, you know, cut this off and use that as your center section in this piece. The next thing I did is, I you probably won't have to do this, but I found out where my ugly parts were, um, you know, my really skinny ones, because these are not all the same. Yours, hopefully you will be able to take the time and pay attention enough to make sure that you get everything marked correctly, and these will all be identical. Um, you won't have to worry about that, but I marked this to be the front because this was the best section um, we're out, out to the side. I get some of these little skinny ones here, especially over here. I get some real skinny ones up around here. Um, so those are my side pieces. And this is the front. The other thing you want to do is 
flip this over so it's upside down and take your, you know, whatever ruler you want to use and you want to mark four inches, which is um, 10.2 centimeters or 102 millimeters roughly. Um, and you want to mark that, I marked it um, on my front part and then on the sides and on the back just so that when I put this in place, I can use that to make sure that it's going in. It should be pretty easy to go in straight up and down, but you know, that way I, at least I can know that it's the same distance all the way around. But this is gonna tell you how far this goes into the PVC. Next, I've got a two inch PVC that I've cut 11 inches long, which is uh, 28 centimeters. So here's the piece that I cut off of, you know, the middle section. These right here, I don't have them more. Okay, sorry, I had to find my piece of paper where everything was written down. Um, I have this small piece here, which I cut with a two and a quarter inch hole saw. And I have two pieces here, which I cut with a two and uh, five eighths inch hole saw. And I would tell you the metric sizes, but the important part is that this is the right size to fit inside, you know, quite snugly fit inside this PVC, which is the size of whatever the smaller end of your coupler is. And these are halfway between the outer diameter of this pipe and this pipe, you know, this piece here, um, because this will fit on top of that as a large section, and then these will fit on top of that as a step down to a smaller section. So um, you want to pick the appropriate hole saw that will give you those effects, because I don't know what size PVC the metric size PVC is. It'll probably be more clear once I, we actually do this. So now we, we can actually start putting this together. Actually, there is one last thing. I have an aluminum rod here, which I cut to 28 and a quarter inches long, um, which is 218 millimeters, or that would be uh, 71.8 centimeters, I guess. And uh, this is a quarter inch thick rod, but um, you want to make sure that it's whatever thickness that the pilot hole from your hole saw will fit into. You want it to be snug so that it will hold things in position. And we're going to put this aside. So now let's take the smaller one of these pieces that we cut out with the hole saw and I want to glue them into place inside of the two inch PVC. I'm going to do that with some super glue, gel super glue. And let's put it in this end. And I'm gonna put the gel on the inside of the pipe. Make sure that I get it close enough to the edge. And because the PVC pipes are not uh, purely circular. They're a little off, so I'm gonna have to um, nudge this a little bit. And I want this to be flush with the end just so that um, I want to make sure that this stays 90 degrees or, or parallel with the length here so that there's not, um, this didn't get too tight for that rod to go through. Well, hammer, hammer works great for that. Next, I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna glue this piece onto the top here. Um, I'm gonna do that with the actual PVC glue. And once again, I do not have my gloves on. And just do the outside. 
And then the inside of this. And the outside with this again. I'm making that a little twist because it seems to. That's the way I was always taught to do it with PVC. I'm just making sure that's completely flush at the top. And now I'm going to go wash my hands. Now that my hands are clean, I'm going to wipe off any excess glue here. Definitely don't want to press up. Now, with the old stuff that I had to put the blue primer on first um, and then put the glue on, it would probably be set up by now. I'm not sure about this fusion stuff, but it feels okay. The next thing we're going to do now is to, I've got to get glue around here and then on the inside of these teeth. And then mostly it's important to get it in here and in the appropriate spot down here. So what I need to do is figure out where that is. And obviously this, the easiest way to do that would be to put this through here. Okay, and I'm gonna mark this line. And this is just gonna tell me that this is above this line is where the glue is going to go. Now I can pull these apart. We're all good there still. And let's go ahead and put some glue around here. I don't know that I can really get glue on these little teeth so much, but I can get it on the top where this is gonna fit down on top of that. And uh, let me glue the inside of that and above this line. All right, now I'm gonna wait, um, you know, 30 minutes or so for this to cure, and then we'll come back out and take a look. The next thing we wanna do is to take some gel super glue. And if you recall, in the very bottom of this, there's a hole very similar to this. Um, we only filled it halfway uh, when we put that little piece in the bottom. So there's a half inch hole that's this size and I want to put some of this gel super glue into there to feel for the little hole in the bottom okay and then put some glue in there and then we take our quarter inch aluminum rod and I've taken some sandpaper and just roughed up the end a little bit. I just want to push it into place. And I'm just going to spray down some zip picker. And with any luck, this should be well attached. Yes, I can pick the whole thing up with that rod. Now we want to insert this piece. And I kind of and I like the way this turned out because it feels like we're actually assembling something substantial instead of just carving something out. This makes it feel kind of real. And by the way, the reason why this sticks out so long, I touched on this earlier, but is because when this goes in, the rod will come through here and it'll be about halfway down this tube. And that'll add extra stability to this instead of if it was all short together, you know, um, just the same size as this, it wouldn't have as st much stability on that rod as if it's got this extra length here. And I'm just taking my PVC glue and run it around the top here. Maybe an inch and a half to two inches thick you know, depth, I should say. And I want to run some around here 
below this four inch um, 10.2 centimeter mark. I don't want to get it on those lines because as you can see, it'll smear the ink. I'm gonna get some more on the inside. Try to go reasonably fast here because we don't want this to dry out. And then I'm gonna thread this little hole on the rod and because everything's uneven on mine I want to make sure I've got the front facing front I think I went too far quickly get it back yeah I instinctively went for the wrong line that I'd drawn on there rotated the right way everything looks pretty straight okay now that that's in place we can go ahead and put our two little Sintra circles that we cut with the hole saw you know what mine's a little bit crooked let me see if I can force this to turn there we go okay. I think that's Good enough. And I'm just going to put some glue on the inside PVC, not this outside piece, but the inside PVC. I have to raise this up a little bit now. And on the outside of my Sintra. If you get some on the outside, it's totally fine. We'll just clean it up afterwards. Then I'm going to drop this down on the rod, push it into place, and once again, I'm not wearing gloves, but I want to push this into place and I want to feel and make sure that it's perfectly centered. I'm going to look down from above and make sure it looks good all the way around, because if it's a little bit off here, it's going to be more off at the top. That said, it just has to look right. It doesn't have to actually be, you know, micron perfect. That looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna go wash my hands again. Okay, so now we just need to put the other one on. And I probably, before I put these in place, I should have sealed the edges with super glue. I'm gonna do that anyway, but it would have been better if I did it before I glued everything together. So uh, when you do it, I highly suggest sealing the edges before, sealing and sanding the edges before you, you know, assemble everything. Just because I didn't put glue, after I washed my hands, I did not put gloves on. But just because um, we're gonna have, when we seal this, we'll end up having to sand it smooth and that'd be a lot easier if you could hold it in your hand. The reason why we want to seal and sand this is because um, we want we don't want this to be a different texture. We want to seal up that foam texture that the Sintra has on the edges. And I'm just putting pressure on here, waiting for that to kind of uh, grab. It certainly grabbed a lot faster when we were putting this center section in. Okay, now it's starting to resist movement. Okay. Okay, so while we're waiting for all of that glue to dry and everything, um, it's you know it's pretty much set now, but it needs a while to cure. Now is a really good time to deal with putting the uh, the little lines on the bottom of this to make it look like a vent. Now I know I said that we I was doing this early on so that I had plenty of time to dry. It's actually been several weeks 
because every step of this build has been days and days of thinking of how to do it and then reworking how to do it because even though it's quite simple at this point, everything that I do now has big effects on the stuff that comes later on. So I've had to completely rework how I've done do it here so that it will match up with the way I want to do the rest of it. Just trust me, it was, it's been a lot of uh, calculating and recalculating and figuring out and yeah, luckily that's all taken care of now. So this has had several weeks to dry. Here's my template and you want to make sure that this lays flat up against that. And so it was kind of sticking out before. So I cut just the tiniest amount off of each end here, you know, like just slightly over the width of the human hair. Um, just do that until it will lay completely flat in here. I thought about putting a little spray mount to stick it down, but I'm afraid that might affect how shiny the silver is underneath it. So we're just gonna have to be careful. And I have this, this is just a dabbing sponge. You can find this at pretty much any arts and crafts store. Um, it's just a little synthetic sponge on the end of a stick. It's got a flat end though, which is nice, and it's round, which will make it easier to not have any straight edges. Although it really shouldn't matter at this point. The paint I have is Rust-Oleum uh, Flat Black. And you don't have to use Rust-Oleum, you can use any black at this point. Um, this has had so long to cure, I don't think you're gonna have any problems with uh, you know, an oil-based silver with a water base on top of that. I think it'll all work just fine at this point. Just make sure that it's flat or matte because you don't want there to be any you know, reflections coming off of what's you know, supposed to be just blackness, you know, nothingness behind here. And I stirred this up really well, and then I shook the can, and then I pulled the lid off so that, you know, the lid has paint on it. And that's where I'm gonna get my paint from. I don't wanna submerge this sponge down into the paint and absorb much of paint. I want it to just get a light coat of paint on it. So I'm just going to set this onto the paint and now I've just got a piece of a cardboard box here and I'm going to make sure that there's nothing wet about that paint. And then I'm just gonna dab it on here. Get some more paint. And do one last one. And with any luck, that should be good. I'm gonna get my tweezers real quick. And hopefully I can pull this straight back. Actually, I can see that I need to get some more paint in there now that I'm down low. like maybe this paint is not wanting to stick to that silver even though this is actually an oil-based paint okay now we get a little more paint on there now let's see if we can peel this off without okay and I might want to go back in there and clean that up with a brush just a little bit there's a couple of spots that don't look quite right Okay, I've just got a little chisel brush and I'm gonna see if I can't clean this up a little bit. It's kind of hard for me to get down here and do this where you can see it. Let me get the more paint on there. I think what I might do is let this dry and then come back because I'm kind of messing up the paint that's there. 
I can kind of get it there. Um, you gotta let that dry and we'll come back. Okay, it's been a little while and I'm pretty sure that's dry. Um, before I come back with the uh, paintbrush, I'm gonna see how a uh, permanent felt tip marker works. It's actually working pretty well. I started to do it with all, the whole thing with just the felt tip marker, but I was afraid that how flimsy the template was, was gonna make it really hard to trace it out. If I'd waited a little bit to do this, it might have come out a little bit better. But this is working pretty well. You also have to remember that this is in the very bottom of a jetpack that you'd have to be, you know, someone would have to be on their knees to be able to see this. But that's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. I need to dry just a little bit more. There's been a little light spot here, but I can fill that in. I'm gonna call that done. Okay, so I was really hoping to get around to now putting the tops on these two side pieces here. But this has actually been a fairly long and complicated video already. And I'd kind of like to get this out and to you because it's been a while since the last video. So I think we're going to go ahead and have to stop right here. Um, I know this doesn't seem like we've done that much looking at it. But you also know that we did quite a bit. Um, and that this is all much more complicated than it appears to be. Also, for every... I don't know, five minutes of video that you saw, there was probably several hours of me trying to figure out not only what to do for these pieces, but also little changes here have big effects later on up, you know, in the rest of the build. Um, so I did quite a bit of work trying to figure out how, what the next steps were going to be. The good news is that it's all pretty much figured out at this point. The entire rest of this centerpiece I pretty much know exactly what to do at this point. Um, there is one little thing that I haven't decided yet, and that is whether or not the next piece here will be just this size, which is basically what we have in the prototype, or if I should cut this bottom piece off here altogether and go with an even smaller size like this, which is a much more aggressive step, which part of me likes, but at the same time, it might just be a little bit too extreme. Plus, also, if we go with this piece, we'll have to do a much more complicated job on this piece. Um, we'll basically have to cut this bottom part off and then reattach it on the inside so that it'll still have a nice positive attachment onto here that'll keep it straight and not you know, rock around a lot. If we just cut this off, it would be it would be secure side to side, but it could easily rock around. And we need to be really careful that everything stays, uh, you know, in the right perpendicular and parallel um, to each other so that you have right angles everywhere. Otherwise, um, you know, little, if you're off by a degree down here, you're gonna be way off at the top. But that's definitely all for another video. The other thing about doing this is that now we have this um, aluminum rod in the middle and that's going to complicate everything down the line as far as shooting goes. I probably should have started out by doing the side pieces and then doing this part. In fact, I even could have done all of this work here and then done this. Would have made shooting it a lot easier, but you know, that's the way it is. Um, you can see here, I tried to clean all this up so it would be easier to see, but um, I was running the risk of removing all this information that I kind of want to keep on here for now. 
and it was also just kind of smearing things up a little bit so it didn't really clean the way I wanted it to but at the same time it, it looks good enough you know you won't notice any of that when it's all painted all in all I think it, it looks good and I'm happy with it and I think in the next couple of videos which I will be working straight away on they shouldn't take anywhere near this long because there's nowhere near as much preparation needed for it I think you'll be able to see that we make some really good progress the next couple of videos so I look forward to it and uh, until then thanks <laughs>